Well, hello there. We're in Leland, Michigan in our interim stadium kitchen working with uh, different pots and pans and utensils and I'm joined by my oldest son Luke. Say hello Luke. Hi Luke. Uh, Luke is going to show us how to prepare pasta carbonara. Um, it's a relatively easy dish. And I'm going to turn it kind of over to Luke. So we're, we're cooking bucatini, which we'll explain in a minute. And Luke? All right, first thing you want to make sure that you put your bacon into a cold pan. That's going to cook for a couple of minutes. I usually start the pasta after that. We're going to cook the bacon until it renders out most of its fat and gets a little crispiness with a little bit of chewiness. Then we're going to combine it with a mixture of egg and Parmesan cheese. All right, so we're cooking the bucatini, and I want to show you the, if you can see the difference. The one on the bottom is the bucatini. It's much heftier. It's got a hole in the middle all the way through, and the spaghetti is much thinner. So Luke likes the bucatini, and we will be using that for our dish today because it absorbs a lot more of the flavor. It's thicker and heartier, and it that little hole in it helps the sauce to cling. This is a mixture of three eggs and one egg yolk and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Now I like to add the cheese slowly, mix in a little bit at a time until I get a texture that I like. Just a, a lot of cheese at a time, but I still want there to be an eggy consistency. At some point there will be a nice consistency where you sort of start to see a lot of that cheese in the mixture. This is really a feel dish. So you want the feel where that's going to be. If you can see it's very frothy and it's going to be nice and light because I've mixed it a lot. It's also going to be nice and rich because we're using egg yolks, not just the egg whites. All right. So I'm just going to add a little bit more cheese by which I mean a lot. So, I have a little story to tell about preparing this dish. And I'm taking Italian lessons from a woman in Pisa, Elisabetta. And she is um, very nice to work with. She, um, we were telling her about making pasta carbonara. And I made the mistake of saying the ingredients, which included Parmesan. And she, I thought she was going to come through the phone and, no, 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 no Parmesan, pecorino, pecorino. But we're in Leland, Michigan, and we're a little bit, um, we, we cannot source all of the ingredients that we might in a big city. So we're going to pretend that we're putting pecorino in, but it's not really, it's Parmesan. Well, there's a couple of things that uh, don't need to be added. So Parmesan cheese is one that I like to add because it has a nice saltiness. Uh, but yeah, it's not the main ingredient. The other one is garlic. You do not need garlic for carbonara. And if you're adding garlic, please stop because it overpowers the dish. So Luke, talk about the, you're using thick bacon. Oh yeah, you really want that thick bacon. The thin bacon is tough to get just right because it's either crispy or it's undercooked. So one of the things that Luke likes to do when he's making, uh, rendering the bacon, is to get a little pasta water and use that because it's got a nice, um, nice uh, flavor to it with the salt that you put in, and he uses that to deglaze the pan. All right, so Luke, we're just about finished on the bacon, and you're using the pasta water to deglaze the pan and render some of the bacon and tell us what you're going to do with the juice that's in there. Well, it's going to thicken down into pure bacon fat and then it's going to go right into this mixture. It's going to be all delicious. So you pour the bacon fat into the um, the eggs and instead of what a lot of people do with carbonara is put that in the pan and you end up with scrambled eggs. You end up with gently warmed eggs that are cooked through because of the bacon fat and the bacon and then we put the pasta in it. All right, so if you've been paying attention, you've noticed that this bacon is no longer pink and it's now starting to 
darken a little bit, get a little crispy around the edges. This is about where we want it. We don't want it to be overcooked and crispy and contribute to a, a really barky product. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this off the pan. We're going to move all the bacon to one side, away from all the fat. We're going to slowly stream this fat into the eggs. It's a process called tempering. All right, so we've got the bacon fat, and you're whisking the eggs. It's a process called tempering. Now, let the bacon fall in, because the fat has heated up the eggs enough that it's gonna let the bacon heat come in without cooking the eggs. That's why we add it a little bit at a time. And now that we've added enough, we can go ahead and add the rest. All right, so we've got all the bacon and all the fat into the eggs, and the eggs are nicely warmed. Still beautiful, still runny, right. the way you want them. The next part is to take our hot pasta, and this is the important part. You gotta make sure you do this right, or it will scramble. Take your hot pasta, and it goes directly into the bowl, and then you start stirring. You can see the steam coming off. You want to keep it moving. Keep it moving, because the second you stop, it'll scramble. So keep it moving, keep it moving. It sure smells good. Keep it moving, keep it moving. All right, go back, grab a little more. And now, you start to see this is going to form a very, very emulsified and creamy sauce. No cream and carbonara, no garlic, just deliciousness. Nice and fatty with that bacon. Grab the rest. The heat from the pasta cooks the eggs to a temperature that is safe, so you don't have to worry about your pregnant wife eating this carbonara. So, Lou, part of the um, trick to this dish is the timing, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. This is a 100% timing dish. But the timing is easy enough that even I can do it. So I think that you want the pasta to be finished around the same time as the bacon. That's correct. Okay. And then as you're finishing the pasta and it's nice and al dente, um, it's it's in the bowl, and the eggs, as you can see, it's just a nice cream. It's not scrambled eggs at all. So, Elisabetta in Pisa, questa es per te. It means this is for you. I have my Italian lesson tomorrow, so we'll see how. Mm, it's hot, but it's tasty. All right. So, the last part. Last part. Probably the most important part or at least, depending on whether you care about flavor, is a lot of black pepper. Like a lot of it. Okay. Like a whole lot. Usually, um, like a lot. Usually we will use regular pepper out of a, a jar, but for this dish, because of the uh, delicate nature of it, you want to do fresh ground pepper. There's a, there is a significant difference. When the taste is significantly different, you want to use the better ingredient. So if you're just putting in a pepper at the beginning of a dish, don't worry about if it's freshly cracked or not. But at the end of a dish, when you're finishing it and you want that flavor, it should be freshly ground black pepper. All right. And in the end, you can add a little cheese if you want some more. I personally don't because I think this is about to taste really good. All right, and we're going to serve a bowl of it. There, I'll show you what it looks like in the bowl. Get that out. Luke's going to give it a little twirl. And grab a little bacon. Put that on.
Right, a little Parmesan. Actually, Pecorino. But it's Parmesan. So, Luke, thank you very much for showing us your pasta carbonara. Um, we will have hopefully a couple more videos here in Leland. We'll be here for, for a little bit more time. But for now, appreciate you watching and see you next time. Thanks.